and welcome to another episode of Zawana Arihuage. We'll be bringing you up to date on all that's happening in and around our community. In recent headlines, some big announcements this week, and we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. But first, the Mohawk Council released their budget for this year. Regan, you have some of the details from this year's budget. Yeah, we attended a press conference this week, and of course it was the fifth annual. They've actually been uh, pretty transparent over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And taking the time to meet with all the reporters from the community and explain things on a case-by-case -case basis, answer any questions. So um, it was a pretty long uh, press conference. We're just going to go right to the story and uh, give the community some highlights. Okay. Take a look. $49,728,363 is the Mohawk Council of Gahnawage's annual budget for 2010-2011. This particular year, we, we zero balanced our budget. It's becoming a greater and greater challenge over the last few fiscal years. This particular year, we're able to balance, zero balance our budget without accessing appropriated reserves. The reason being, there was three major reasons. One is our Ungawista dividend, which comes from Continent 8, uh, goes to Ungawista Limited, and then is distributed 50% each to Dewadoni Zakta and the MCK. We usually plan for a 1.7 million U.S. dividend annually. This particular year it was 4 million U.S. They had a one-time uh, cash, larger cash distribution, C8 Tonguista, and then it filtered down to Dewadoni Zakta and MCK. We also had a fuel subsidy that came from INAC, uh, a smaller amount of uh, 300,000 and change. And also we have an asset report that the federal government does every three years. There was also some dollars attached to that. So when you carry all of those... Uh, money is over. It was just over $3 million, which allowed us to zero balance without tapping into appropriated reserves. If not for those exceptional amounts, we would have had to tap into, we're talking $3 million plus into our reserves, which would have depleted them significantly. So we can say year to year, each fiscal year is getting tougher and tougher to zero balance. So it's going to be a real challenge in the upcoming next few fiscal years. Although there were no major cuts, the Mohawk Council maintains tight financial controls, kept budgets in line without sacrificing service and delivery. Some budget highlights are as follows. The Mohawk Council is proud to continue its support of community organizations such as the library with increased contributions to the Gahnawage Education Center, Youth Center, Fire Brigade and Cultural Center, the sum of 951500 versus 910 in 2009. The elderly snow removal program continued this year with a price tag of $32,473, while major capital projects included Wolf's Den area and the Old Malone Highway waterline rehabilitation. The Daily Transportation Department was also approved for the purchase of a new school bus at 97500 By law, school buses must be replaced after 12 years of service. The budget did increase this year. The Mohawk Council says there are several areas of concern. You can see that the global budget increased uh, by nearly $5 million. There's uh, a little bit of uh, um, explanation behind that. It's not an actual expenditure increase. It's our housing program has a lot of deferred revenues from the previous year. Our housing program has uh, practically uh, dried up in terms of new mortgages. So the, uh, the amounts that they account for every year they plan for are just carrying over from year to year to year. So it looks like a growing amount, but it's actually not being expensed, uh, especially the last couple of years. This particular fiscal year, uh, Alexis Shackleton, the director of SDU, will be working on a complete housing review, looking at making the mortgage program a little more accessible for the community. We also have a, a major concern with our current social assistance budget. You can see in the press release it's increased this particular past fiscal year from 600 to 800 clients, the actual client uh, caseload, that's uh, a huge increase in one fiscal year. Uh, going back to the mid, early to mid 90s, the case, total case load was approximately 1,200 to 1,300 case files and our SA expenses were very high at the time. We're approaching those levels, uh, uh, especially last fiscal year, the, the increase and projecting into the new fiscal year increases. So again, that's something we have to monitor and control very closely. With nearly 77% of Gahnawage's budget being external, the Mohawk Council says it's time for the community to start looking at own source revenue. 
some other questions that came up in previous years, there was a request for the percentage of revenue uh, breakdown. So I did it uh, in preparation for this press conference today. We're approximately 50% uh, nearly, uh, right on 50% from our federal funding agreement with uh, INAC, uh, Indian Affairs. Our provincial agreements, which are our QKR user fee agreements and also policing agreements, account for about 10% of our total revenue. And then we have this year a particularly large amount deferred revenue, so it's carry over federal and provincial dollars from previous last uh, fiscal year. It's about 16.6% this year. Our uh, external other revenue, so this is tickets and fines, the Ungawista dividend, uh, landfill revenue, housing mortgages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's roughly makes up about 17.7% of our revenue. And finally, our internal revenue, which is uh, for reporting requirements, it's really a uh, uh, invoicing between MCK programs. Uh, the good example is our capital program and our garage. They invoice each other because capital has to actually report on these expenditures. That accounts for about 3.7% of our overall revenue. So really we're in the, the area of about 77% uh, dependent on external uh, revenue sources from the feds in the province, which uh, is not the greatest situation. Uh, federal government released their budget a couple weeks back to looking at a 50 billion plus deficit in the upcoming fiscal year. So dollars aren't gonna be uh, readily accessible, uh, definitely in Ottawa and at the Quebec, our, our region. In other news, the Jesse Deere Memorial Media Scholarship Fund is making a call for applications. Now, Regan, uh, as one of the founding members of this fund, um, what is the board looking for in a candidate? Uh, well, we did uh, do a quick press conference this morning, so I'm going to let some of our chairs, uh, you know, uh, answer some of those questions. But um, the one thing that I really did want to say was uh, I can tell you that we're looking for individuals that embody the same spirit that Jesse did. Mm -hmm. He was just a great guy, you know, and without getting into all of that, uh, we're just going to go to the actual uh, press conference and uh, see what uh, the other board members had to say. So take a look. Onawaga's local media is proud to announce the uh, call for applications for the Jesse Deer Memorial Media Scholarship Fund. Uh, we are all gathered, the founding uh, members of this, and uh, we're all still uh, involved and all proud to be involved the Eastern Door. Oriwaze, uh, Mohawk Television, KTV, and uh, K103 created this fund to pay tribute to our friend Jesse, uh, who passed away last November. The fund is open to post-secondary students who are pursuing media-related studies. It is the intention of the board of directors of the fund to award at least one $500 bursary this year, and due to the uh, amounts that we have uh, gathered so far uh, with donations. Uh, I think we'll be able to do this for several years to come and hopefully uh, you know people will continue to donate so it will run indefinitely. Applicants are asked to write a 500 word essay explaining the reasons for applying and the deadline for applying is Friday April 30th at 4 p.m. You know if we have two people that are that are you know both outstanding and both meet all the criteria and, and we can't make a decision uh, then I think it would be considered uh, on giving uh, on giving two uh, two scholarships out uh, in one year. Uh, you know we're never we're, uh, we're not gonna uh, you know say that we're not gonna give out uh, to two, two worthy people. It's gonna, you know it's a case by case basis. The uh, idea to do this now is to give people a chance to uh, first of all give them a month or so to create an essay and write an essay and and uh, really show why they think they deserve this. And it gives enough time as well for us to, to make the decision. There uh, hopefully will be family involvement. We, we talked about that uh, when it comes to the uh, decision. And uh, it'll be for the fall semester. We want people to embody the spirit that Jesse had uh, in, in his community involvement and his, uh, his giving to the community. So we're looking at people who are also who are ex excelling academically, but are also involved in the community in one way or another. When we got together uh, to start this fund, um, you know, it was it was out of our respect and our love for for Jesse Deer. Uh, I think the community showed that they also um, had a strong had strong feelings for Jesse, 
And this is just another way to keep his, his memory and his name alive. If we get an influx of cash, 10,000, 20,000, a large number like that, then maybe we'll look at upping it to $1,000 for each year. Uh, but for now, we're guaranteeing that this scholarship will live on for, for 10 years.